your pick player too. How about it? Well, looks like this category is, oh, what a night. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Hey, what kind of wedding reception do you suppose the king and queen of a chess set would have? Considering the way it moves on a chessboard, which chess piece would not be able to do the electric slide at the royal wedding reception? The bishop, the king, the queen, or the rook? All yours, please. Hey, who's the wallflower? The electric slide moves back and forth and side to side. The bishop can only move diagonally, so no wedding dancing for him. However, I did see him leave with one of the bridesmaids. Player one, it's up to you. What's next? Say hello to free verse and free throws. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. Suppose that when the Harlem Globetrotters were forming in 1926, they had recruited only Harlem Renaissance writers. Who could have gone from poet to power forward? Maya Angelou, Alex Haley, Langston Hughes, or Metal Lark Lemon? Take a shot, player. Langston Hughes was one of the most well-known of the Harlem Renaissance writers. And he also had a killer half-court jump shot. You have the honors, player two. One, two, raise the almighty three. And this one is, if I hear it one more time, I'll go blind. How does $2,000 sound? Hey, remember that 70s song, Blinded by the Light? Because his or her eyes are the most light sensitive, which of the characters from these classic rock tunes would most easily be blinded by the light? Bob Welch's Ebony Eyes, Van Morrison's Brown Eyed Girl, Sugar Loaf's Green Eyed Lady, or Velvet Underground's Pale Blue Eyes? Player one. Blue eyes are the most light sensitive. Let's see, linger on your light sensitive eyes, your bloodshot eyes. Oh, damn it! Player one, gimme category. You can't stop at three, no, you gotta have four, yeah! Coming at you, broken toes and severe groundings. You get this one right and it's $3,000. Hey, did your parents ever yell at you after they stepped on toys you left lying around? Suppose that the inventor of Lincoln Logs left them strewn all over his floor. Which dad would be the one yelling at him to clean up his room? Milton Bradley, Abraham Lincoln, Frank Lloyd Wright, or Woodrow Wilson? All positions are filled, but thank you for applying. Player one, what do you say? Player one, hit it. The architect Frank Lloyd Wright's son, John Wright, conceived and marketed Lincoln Logs. Ow! Gosh darn that kid! One of these days, I'm gonna... Frank, his toys wouldn't be on the floor if you'd build him toy chests without any damn windows in them. Let's have a category, player one. You don't want to blow me on number five. Shake hands with... Oh, my gompers! This one's worth a grand. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If the makers of Romper Room started a new show called Samuel Gomper's Room, whom would the host probably see through the magic mirror? Candy makers, labor union members, White House cabinet members, or Australian skinheads? Let's take a look at the right answer. Samuel Gompers was a famous labor union leader. Of course, when Samuel Gompers hosts a kiddie show, it brings a whole new meaning to Don't Pick Scabs. Category time. Player two, it's your call. Oh. 
Okay, give it up for R&B GPA. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, class, sit up straight and pay attention. In his song, What a Wonderful World, Sam Cooke tells us he don't know much about history. Well, since this is one of the subjects mentioned in What a Wonderful World, Mr. and Mrs. Cook can probably expect an ugly parent-teacher conference with which of Sam's teachers? His music teacher, his home economics teacher, his geometry teacher, or his geography teacher? Blair Wall. Sam doesn't know much about geography, but he does know that he loves you. <laughs> Which makes him an excellent phys ed student. Player one, your choice. What are we doing? This one likes to go by El Dorado. Why don't you come to your senses? Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. If you drive your Cadillac El Dorado to the mythical Latin American city of El Dorado, what will you bring back in the trunk of your car? Golden jewels, women warriors, bad weather, or chopped wood? Layer two, it's your El Dorado is the name of a mythical Latin American city filled with golden jewels. <laughs> So you'd be plenty rich, but if you ask me, forget the golden jewels. You don't want to scratch the paint job on your sweet, sweet ride. There's your gold, my friend. Hmm, I wonder what player two's gonna pick. Oh, I was hoping you were gonna choose that. Okay, player one, scram. Player two, get ready for a diss or dat. The category for this diss or dat question is, it really satisfies. All right, I'm going to read off seven names of candy bars, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's got caramel, nougat, or both. As each one comes up, if it's a candy bar with caramel, press one. If it's a candy bar with nougat, press two. If it's both, press three. And if you want to skip one, press four. You get 500 for each right answer, and you lose 500 for a wrong answer or one you don't get to. Okay, can I have 30 seconds on the clock, please? And we're off. Mars bar, caramel, nougat, or both? Milky Way. Twix. Sugar Daddy. Hey, Brady. Three Musketeers. Payday. Last one. Watch him a calling. That's all she wrote. Six out of seven. Good day at the plate, batter. Let's check out your new average. Okay, let's roll. Player one, tell me what's happening. This category is known as men seeking women with boys' names. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. So I'm looking through the personal section of the paper to see if my ad made it in and check out what I found. Man in black seeking partner to help me lose these Folsom Prison blues. Was once a rambler, will now walk the line. Leave message for a boy named Sue. Who may have placed this ad? Johnny Cash, Bob Seger, Eddie Rabbit, or Kenny Rogers? All yours. Johnny Cash, the man in black, popularized Folsom Prison Blues, the Rambler, I Walk the Line, and a boy named Sue. A boy named Sue? God, no wonder he's got a place of personals at. Player one, hit me with the category. Nice choice, lover. You've just been invited to a three-way. Okay, listen up. This is pretty simple. You're going to see a three-way like this one. When the correct three-way member is lit up, buzz in. If you make a match, you pack it a thousand bucks. But be careful. If you don't make a correct match, you'll lose some cash every time you're wrong. But don't be misled. This question may or may not have anything to do with the three-way as a group. So, let's get going. The category for this three-way is All the Live Long Day. And that means we're going to be joined by Morning, Noon, and Night. Well, good luck. And don't worry, I'll still respect you when this is over. Oh, 
Oh yes! Oh yes! Well, that's all we got. Let's see how it turned out. Looks like you finished up on top here, Player 2. I bet that's just the way you like it. But what's that got to do with the overall scores? Well, Player 1, it looks like you're still strutting your stuff in the lead there. Nice job. Well, it seems we're moving on now. Let's see what's up next. That's it for round one. Let's go to round two. Okay, I've got a screw for each of you. Oh, oh, oh damn it. <sighs> get that later. Uh, here you go. One more thing. Don't be afraid of those screws. You got them for a reason. If you want to force your partner there to answering the question, just buzz in, slap the S key. Got it? Now get in there and screw with abandon. Player two, give me something. For your enjoyment. Yo, lunch lady, give me some more. Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Hey, remember Oliver, the musical version of Dickens' Oliver Twist? Well, suppose the musical Oliver were about Oliver Cromwell. Which of these songs might best describe Cromwell's leadership of Britain's parliament? Consider yourself part of the monarchy? Parliamentary seat for sale? Revolution, glorious revolution? Or pick a president or two? Bet you wish you'd pick this. <laughs> Oliver Cromwell led Parliament to depose the king, ending the monarchy's absolute power. Boy, that'd be a great topic for a musical. Why don't they just make a musical about the Titanic? Uh, oh. Player two, take your pick. And I believe this one's called Wittgenstein Stays on My Mind. How does four thousand dollars grab you? Say, maybe you've heard of Prince Machiavelli, makers of perfumes and colognes. Well, don't you think it's about time the world of designer fragrances met the world of philosophy? Which advertising slogan would work best for a perfume company called Prince Machiavelli? I smell, therefore I am. God is dead, but his fragrance lives on. An unexamined scent is not worth smelling, for the scent justifies the means. The scent justifies the means. Machiavelli's name has become synonymous with pragmatism, cynicism, and unscrupulousness because he believed in doing what you gotta do. <laughs> Apparently one thing you gotta do is pay $45 an ounce for something called musk. Your turn, player two. What's it gonna be? The category is Unsinkable Ad Campaigns. $2,000 says you don't know this one. Hey, have you seen any of those Titanic TV shows or maybe that Titanic movie or maybe that Titanic Broadway show? Well, the Titanic was the first ship to use a particular rescue-related invention. Considering this, which product would be the best choice to sponsor a production about the Titanic? Lifesavers Candy, Life Buoy Soap, SOS Scouring Pads, or Black Flag Bug Spray? Player. Uh, oh. Player two, it's you. Oh boy. See, now I could have given you some cash if you pick this. <laughs> the Titanic was the first ship to use an SOS signal. She sank to the ocean floor, but damn, her galley was spotless. You have the honors, player two. Oh boy, think positive, my friend, because you're about to face an impossible question.
The selection is pop music is so deep. This very special question is going to be worth twenty thousand dollars. All right, get ready for the impossible. Because it features a word which has the most meanings in the Oxford English Dictionary, which of the following songs could be the most easily misinterpreted? REM Stan, The Birds, Turn, 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 George Harrison's Got My Mind Set on You, or AHA's Take on Me? Should have picked this. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, set has more definitions than stand, turn, or take. Would have been nice if George had used a dictionary to try and come up with more words to the song. Hmm, I wonder what player two is gonna pick. Not fourteen, not sixteen. You're right in between. Now serving cute spiders. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Heads up, here it comes. If that lovable TV top Webster were actually a web-spinning spider, what would not have been true about Emmanuel Lewis's adorable character? He would have blue blood, he would have six legs, he would recycle his own web, or he would probably die while trying to mate. Spiders have eight legs, not six. It's too bad they only have one life, though. A hey, Emmanuel. Player one, anti up. Uh oh, left nut kick. I'm sore. It's time for a licorice rest. Let's see if you can make sense of this gibberish category. Them gnomes fight good. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10K. All right, as soon as you know the answer, buzz in, because I'm taking away some cash every second and a half. Okay, listen up and tell me, what cliche does this rhyme with? Gnome doesn't wilt in the fray. Player two, it's in your court. It actually took three days and four hours counting lunch breaks. Category time, player two, it's your call. On the big bayou in Louisiana, quest on 17. Open wide and get ready for the mother of all gooses. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. If Mother Goose wrote fairy tales for the publication Mother Jones, which of the following tales would most likely be read to small children at bedtime? Little Miss Muffet's Quick Casseroles, Evil King Reagan and the Wise Spotted Owl, Wee Willy Winky and his Washboard Abs, or Jack is from Mars, Jill is from Venus? Layer 2. Any fairy tale that portrays Reagan as an evil king and praises the spotted owl would fit nicely into a liberal magazine like Mother Jones. <laughs> and in the next issue, look for an article called How Trickle-Down Economics Forced an Old Woman into a Shoe. Your pick, Player 2. How about it? Well, what do we have here? Viva Barista! You get 4,000 clams for this one. Say, so you know how they say that the best cure for a hangover is to have a little bit of the hair of the dog that bit you? Well, imagine that you've stumbled into Starbucks with a caffeine headache desperate for a cappuccino. Based upon the origin of the word cappuccino, what might the barista offer you? The piece of the pie that bit you, the hood of the month that bit you, the tail of the horse that bit you, or the pants of the sailor that bit you? The name Cappuccino comes from the order of Friars Minor Capuchin Monks in Italy. The coffee drink got its name from the color of the monks' hoods. <laughs> so you see, those monks aren't actually chanting, it's their audible caffeine buzz. Player two, give me something. Step right up for question 19. 
This one's called Bo Knows Diddly. One right answer and $6,000 head your way. Let's see how you handle this one. Say legendary guitarist Bo Diddley is performing when suddenly he starts choking on a ham bone. If Bo Diddley coughs in his distinctive ham bone rhythm, how would it sound? Is it... <coughs> or... <coughs> or perhaps... <coughs> or finally... <coughs> Now, that'd be reggae, and I don't think he'd be coughing because of a ham bone. Player one, it's yours if you want it. In case you're wondering, this is the Bo Diddley beat. <coughs> And that's Bo Diddley's lunch. Let's have a category, player one. Pucker up for... Wow, is he clumsy. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Hey, remember on Saturday Night Live how Chevy Chase's tagline was, I'm Chevy Chase and you're not? Well, which of the following is not Chevy Chase? A town in Maryland, a dish made of pig intestines, Benji's voice, an oh heavenly dog, or an old English ballad? Take a sh- Chevy Chase is all of these things except a dish made of pig intestines. That would be Chevy Chitlins. <laughs> Which is a strange coincidence, because when I think of Chevy, I think of ham. Player two, take your pick. Welcome to the Jack Attack. Keep your eyes on the screen, and when you see two words that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, I give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're going down 2,000. But don't forget... Remember the clue. Not any old word's gonna do it. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. The power of prayer. Better say your prayers, and you better do it fast. Just a few bucks, but not you, my friend. You really sucked. <laughs>
but don't let it go to your head, because... You don't know! All right, that's...